So I've always had this idea of wanting to turn my car into somewhat of a little camper, kind of like how people turn their big vans into a little New York City apartment, but a lot smaller, like a lot smaller, like a third of the size. And since Mother Nature does whatever she wants to whenever I'm camping, it has led me to staying inside the car often, quite often actually, whether it's wind, rain, or just simply me forgetting my temples. <laughs> so I've done a ton of modifications to it to try to get it to be as comfortable as I could, but it just never came out right. Maybe it's too small, or maybe it's just not possible. Or maybe I just haven't tried hard enough. So the first version was basically taking out the third row seats and building a storage platform in the back so that I can store things, but also use it as a platform so that when I fold down the second row seats, I can sleep inside. But the problem with that was that I had no headroom, so every time I was in there, I was kind of like slouching like this all the time. And then came the second version, which was to completely take out the second row seats so that I can have more room to store things where the seats originally were. Although that gave me more storage, it didn't solve my first problem, which was I still had no headroom. But before we get to the third version, which I think it's the best version yet, I'm gonna tell you how all of this came about. So in 2019, I went on a camping trip with my friends and I decided to take my BMW X6. I was only about a quarter mile away from the spot when I got super stuck on a hill. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Who takes a BMW X6 that slammed on coilovers on a camping trip? As so we left the car there and loaded all our belongings into my friend's 4Runner, I thought to myself, I really need a four-wheel drive SUV for this if I want to keep doing this. So I've always really wanted a 70 series Land Cruiser, but we don't really get those in the US. So the next best thing was the 80 series Land Cruiser. And after months of being on Craigslist, I finally found the one. But it was about 400 miles away from LA in Oakland. And I could have either driven there or flown there, but what if this whole thing was a scam? Second coffee of the day! <laughs> So when I typed in LA to Oakland on Google, the first suggestion that came up was a bus. It was going to be a long journey, but at least if this whole thing went south, I would have only spent $30 to get there. What could go wrong? Should I do it? Fuck it. Here's a look at what's happening today. The first coronavirus death in California has been confirmed in Placer County. I had no idea it was gonna be that bad. My next stop will be Kettleman for a break. Thank you so much for your cooperation. I greatly appreciate it. If you've ever traveled from SoCal to NorCal, it's basically this view the whole six hours. We get to our first stop, I get some food and get back on the bus. We keep driving and all of a sudden, I hear this loud bang coming from the engine of the bus. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> So what's the plan? Well, I'm walking this way so I can tell okay. everybody at the same time. So, this is basically what's happening. And then I still remember sitting on the side of the freeway in my Asian squad thinking to myself, what am I supposed to do now? Like, I have somebody that I'm supposed to meet in Oakland who was at least two hours away, and if I don't show up, I'm the scam. I just called an Uber. Should be here in like 15, 20 minutes. I got dropped off at the Fremont Bar Station and had to go to the 19th Street Station in Oakland. After 12 hours of traveling, there it was. I was so happy it wasn't a scam. So after some negotiation, I take the car and then I hit up my friend Dan, who lives in Oakland, to take me to his favorite restaurant in Oakland. He took me to this spot called Vientian Cafe, the best Southeast Asian food, by the way. After that, it was time to get some gas and get back on the road because I was 400 miles or six hours away from home. But thankfully, I made it back right before 3 a.m. Okay, let's go. So from the moment I got on that bus until the time I got home, it had been like 20 hours, 20 and a half hours. I should have just taken the plane, honestly. So this right here is the third version, which I haven't finished it, obviously, but look at it. Ooh, baby. Look at that finish. Also got some drawers down here. So I can put stuff. Got two of these. Wow. So I completely took out everything in the interior, including everything that I previously built. Yeah. 
I took out all the trim, uh, I took out the front seats, uh, even down to the carpet so I could give that really good deep wash. So last week we got some really heavy rain in California so I had to stop working on it because it was just too much rain and the wood wasn't finished so if any of the moisture or water got on it it would it would have been just a whole mess honestly i packed everything up and then i left this huge plastic crate where the garage leaks from so that it doesn't get on the wood so i packed everything up and then went back to the bay area for chinese new year's to celebrate it with the family Today is Chinese New Year's Day and we're starting it off by egg rolls. So me and Jay are the beginners here and we are learning by the by the Hans. <laughs> I'm gonna try one of these. Oh. The one that dad used to make, it has food. This oh, yeah. yeah this mm. is a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all those years of child labor. Rice oh, paper. rice paper. Those oh. are good too. How oh. many? Oh. 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 <laughs> this corner right here, see this? It's no good. I'm glad you don't want any time, Muncho. Check, check, do I come? Tell you, you know. My papa, that's not bad. My contribution this year is to make a soup. I'm kind of nervous because I haven't made it in a while, but there's a lot of people and. I'm gonna try my best. So the part I hate the most about this soup is cutting the pineapple because of all these little, I don't know what they're called, but when you're done, you should have something like this. Not, not the best work, but it's honest work, right? Mm. <laughs> A few days later, I came back as the rain stopped and then started working on it again. I'm almost done. I know, not with the finish, but with the, the build. I just made the last piece of wood that we need. That is the top piece for the right side of the build. So I'm using this water-based poly on matte finish, and it looks really good. It does yellow it up a little bit, but this is like the minimum you gotta do to protect it. So I'm using these terry cloth sponges. Um, they come in a pack of Eight, like this at Harbor Freight. It was super cheap. I think I paid, I wouldn't have paid more than five dollars for this. Dab it a little bit. So the way to use this is kind of like basically putting on lotion, right? You kind of dab it everywhere. And the thing about this water-based poly is that it's very, very forgiving. So if you mess up, it's fine. So you basically just dab it everywhere and then you just brush it around, brush it around.
If you want to see the full finished version, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that when I post it next week, you'll be able to see it. Thank you so much for listening to this long story of how I got this car and my whole process of building it. But I hope you enjoyed it and see you guys again next week. Peace.